Welcome back to MedCrime Medical Tutorials. In today's tutorial, we shall be covering antifungal drugs, their classification, their pharmacology, their indications, and associated side effects. Let's start with the classification. Antifungal agents can be classified based on their mechanism of action or their structure. When we classify these drugs based on their mechanism of action, we come up with three broad classes. Those are the antifungals working by damaging the permeability of the cell membrane of the fungi, and the fungus that inhibit sheet and synthesis in the cell wall, and the antifungal drugs which inhibit the synthesis of nucleic acids. And on the other hand, when you classify them based on their structure, we have a number of classes ranging from imidazoles, triazoles, allylamines, morpholines, thiocarbamates, substituted pyridones, and polyne antibiotics together with echinocardins. The first class of antifungal agents that we're going to start with is the polyne antibiotics. We have two examples under the polyne antibiotics, that's the amphotericin B and nistatin. Amphotericin B and nistatin work by binding to the fungal cell membrane component that's known as egosterol. This leads to an increased fungal cell membrane permeability and therefore there's a loss of intracellular constituents by a development of amphotericin B associated poles in the cell membrane. Amphotericin B is known to have a less affinity to the mammalian cell component known as cholesterol. The interaction with this cholesterol component is the one that accounts for most adverse effects of amphotericin B. And amphotericin B has an activity against candida species, cryptococcus neoformans, blastomyces, dermatitis, histoplasma capsulatum, and sporothrix skinky. Coccidates, imidis, paracoccidates, plasteresis, and aspergillus species together with Penicillinum manifei, also are sensitive to amphotericin B. Amphotericin B is administered as an intravenous inhibition for the treatment of candida esophagitis, rapidly progressive mucomycosis or invasive adbacillosis because it has a poor absorption from the GS tract. An intratico infusion of amphotericin B has been found to be useful in the treatment of patients with meningitis that is caused by coccidioids. Intravenous administration of amphotericin B is used as a treatment of choice for the mucomycosis and is used as the initial treatment of infections caused by cryptococcal meningitis, severe or rapidly progressing histoplasmosis, blastomycosis, and coccidomycosis. In other cases, amphotericin B has shown to be effective in the treatment of fungal endophthalmitis through a local intraocular injection. What are the side effects that are associated with amphotericin B? The most common side effects that most patients face are fever and chills. Tachypnea respiratory stida or some modest hypotension may also be reported in these patients who receive amphotericin B infusion, but patients who have a pre-existing cardiac or pulmonary disease may tolerate the metabolic demands of this reaction poorly and develop hypoxia or hypotension. Although this reaction ends spontaneously in about 30 to 45 minutes, the use of pethidine can be employed in reducing the times and shortening this reaction. And also, a pretreatment with oral paracetamol or an intravenous administration of hydrocortisone at the start of the infusion can decrease the incidence of these side effects from being experienced. Patients who receive amphotericin B in the treatment of deep mycosis may also experience azotemia. A number of formulations of amphotericin B have been developed in an attempt to reduce the toxicity profile of this drug and also to increase the efficacy of amphotericin B. The most common formulations we have are lipid formulations that the colloidal dispersion and liposomal amphotericin B. Formulating amphotericin B with lipids has shown to alter the drug distribution with lower levels of this drug entering into the kidneys, therefore, the chances of developing nephrotoxicity are also lowered. Whereas we know these formulations are less toxic to the patients, but they are significantly expensive than the conventional amphotericin B, therefore many patients might not afford these lipid formulations. Under this class of pollen antifungals, we have also another agent known as nistatin. Nistatin is a polyne antifungal drug with a ring structure 
and a mechanism of action that's similar to that of A for the reason B. Nistatin is known to be too toxic for systemic use, therefore its use is limited to the tropical treatment of superficial infections that are caused by Candida albicans. Infections that are commonly treated by this drug are oral candidiasis, sometimes known as oral trash, mild esophageal candidiasis, and vaginitis. The second classification of antifungal agents are known as azole antifungus. Azole antifungus are synthetic drugs with a broad spectrum of fungistatic activity. Azole antifungus can be classified into two major groups, that's the imidazoles and triazoles. This classification is based on the number of nitrogen atoms bound to a five-member azole nucleus, whereby in imidazoles we have two nitrogen atoms bound to a five-member azole nucleus, and in triazoles we have three nitrogen atoms bound to that five-member azole nucleus. Examples of imidazoles include crotrimazole, keroconazole, and myconazole. And an example of triazoles are fluconazole, itraconazole, and variconazole. All azole antifungals exert an antifungal activity by the process of inhibiting cytochrome P450 enzymes. These cytochrome P450 enzymes are responsible for the demethylation of lanostro to egostro. With an inhibition of cytochrome P450 enzymes, there is a reduced concentration of egostro in the fungal membrane, and this reduction results in a damaged and leaky cell membranes. The toxicity of these drugs depends on their relative affinities for the mammalian or fungal cytochrome P450 enzymes, and the triazoles tend to have fewer side effects, better absorption, better drug distribution in body tissues, and fewer drug interaction. Fluconazole is a triazole that does not require acidic environment as does ketoconazole for gastrointestinal absorption. About 80 to 90% of the orally administered dose is absorbed. This yields to a high serum drug levels and with this we say fluconazole has a good oral bioavailability. The half-life of the drugs 27 to 37 hours and this permits once daily dosing in patients who have a normal renal function. And only 11% of the circulating drug is bound to plasma proteins. Fluconazole penetrates widely into most body tissues, and therefore, in the cerebral spinal fluid, we have about 60 to 70% of cell levels, and this permits effective treatment for the fungal meningitis. 80% of fluconazole is excreted unchanged in urine, and the dose reduction therefore may be required in the presence of a renal failure or renal insufficiency. With fluconazole, we have an effective treatment of infections that are caused by candida species and trash in an end-stage patients who have HIV AIDS is often refractory to nystatin, clotrimazole, and ketoconazole, but with fluconazole, we can effectively surprise it. HIV AIDS patients with esophageal candidiasis usually respond to fluconazole. A single dose of about 150 mg of fluconazole is effective in the treatment of adeno candidiasis. And in the cases of candida urinary tract infection, you can use a 3 day dose of oral fluconazole and manage this infection effectively. Fluconazole may be an alternative to anfotericin B in the initial treatment of a mild cryptococcal meningitis or coccidoidal meningitis. But fluconazole can also be taken prophylactically by end-stage HIV AIDS patients and can reduce the incidence of developing cryptococcal meningitis, esophageal candidiasis, and superficial fungal infections because you know these patients have immunosuppression and are at risk of fungal infections. A stable non neutropenic patients who have candidemia can also be adequately treated with fluconazole. The side effects that are associated with fluconazole are very minimal because fluconazole were tolerated and an asymptomatic liver enzyme elevations may be witnessed in these patients. Some patients may experience a drug-associated hepatic necrosis and alopecia. Acquired administration of enzyme inhibitor fluconazole with phenytoin results in an increased serum phenytoin levels, so you need to note of this interaction. Itraconazole is another example of a triazole that's lipophilic and water-insoluble, 
Therefore, it requires a low gastric pH for its absorption. Aisho corners as a variable by availability when administered orally of about 20 to 60 percent. Itraconazole is highly protein bound in about 99% of the drug and is metabolized in the liver then excreted in bile. It is most useful in the long term suppressive treatment of a disseminated histoplasmosis in patients who have HIV AIDS and in an oral treatment of non meningeal blastomycosis. Itraconazole is used as the drug of choice for the treatment of other forms of sporotrichosis except meningitis. It is replaced Ketoconazole as the drug of choice in the treatment of paracoxidomycosis and chromomycosis. Another example is ketoconazole. Ketoconazole is an imidazole that can be absorbed orally but requires an acidic gastric environment for an optimal absorption from the gastrointestinal tract. It remains to be used in the treatment of cutaneous and mucomembranous dematophage and yeast infections. But it has been replaced by newer triazoles in the treatment of more serious candidial infections and disseminated mycosis. Ketoconazole is usually effective in the treatment of oral trash, but fluconazole is superior to ketoconazole for the refractive trash in these patients. A widespread dematophyte infection of the skin surfaces can be treated easily with an oral doses of ketoconazole. The use of ketoconazole may be associated with a number of side effects, mostly linked to the gastrointestinal system when high doses are prescribed, for example, nausea, vomiting, and anorexia. A gastric distress can be reduced by taking ketoconazole with food. Proritis or an allergic dermatitis can occur in a few number of patients, about 10%, and liver enzyme elevations is usually reversible in these cases. The chances of getting ketoconazole associated hepatitis is rare, but at high doses, ketoconazole is known to cause a clinically significant reduction in testosterone synthesis and also blocks the adrenal response to corticotrophin. Therefore, if men use this drug, gynecomastia, impotence, a reduced sperm count, and demyl libido can occur, and a prolonged use of ketoconazole can result in an irregular menses in women. But these hormonal effects have led to the use of ketoconazole as a potential adjunctive treatment for prostatic carcinoma. Clotrimazole is a broad spectrum fungistatic imidazole that is used in the treatment of tropical oral skin or vaginal infections that are caused by candida albicans and is also employed in the treatment of infections that are caused by cutaneous dematophytes. A tropical use of clotrimazole results in a therapeutic drug concentration in the epidermis and mucous membrane, which less than 10% of this drug systemically absorbed. The third class of antifungal agents that we are going to look at is fluorinated pyrimidines. Under fluorinated pyrimidines, we have a common example of a drug known as flucytosine. Flucytosine, or 5-FC, is an pyrimidine analog of cytosine that was originally synthesized for possible use as an antineoplastic agent. But the active metabolite of 5 fluoroalacyl interferes with fungal DNA synthesis by the inhibition of thymidylate synthetase. Fungal cells take up flucytosine by the help of an enzyme known as cytosine permeas. This drug is then intracellularly fast converted to 5-FU, that's 5-flucytosine. This drug is then converted intracellularly to its first component known as 5-flucytosine. 5-flucytosine is then converted into 5 fluorodipsuridine monophosphate and fluorouridine triphosphate by the help of an enzyme known as cytosine deaminase. These two products, the 5 Fluorodeoxyrudine monophosphate inhibits DNA synthesis and fluorodeoxyrudine triphosphate inhibits RNA synthesis. Incorporation of these two metabolites into the fungal RNA inhibits the process of protein synthesis. Flucytosine has a significant antifungal activity against candida species and fungal organisms that are responsible for chromomycosis. Allylamines, 
are reversible non-competitive inhibitors of fungal enzymes choline monoxidinase. This enzyme is responsible for the conversion of squalene to lanostra. With a decrease in lanostral production, egostral production is also decreased, affecting fungal cell membrane synthesis and also its function is also impaired. These agents exhibit fungicidal activity against dematophytes and fungistatic activity against all yeasts. Naphthitin, which is an example of an allylamine, is available for tropical use only in the treatment of cutaneous demarophyte and candida infections. Another example of allylamine is known as tabinafine. Tabinafine is available for tropical and systemic use as an oral tablet in the treatment of demarophyte skin infections and fungal nail infections. Echinocardins are semi-synthetic lipopeptide antifungal agents. An example of echinocardins is caspofungin. Caspofungin works by inhibiting the synthesis of beta d glucan, which is a cell wall component of a filamentous fungi. It is a profile the treatment of invasive aspergillosis in patients who are not responding to amphotericin B itraconazole. Caspofungin use is also associated with a number of side effects or adverse effects that are mediated through the histamine release. These side effects include facial flushing, rash, fever, and pruritus. But dose reductions are required in the presence of moderate hepatic insufficiency. Another class of antifungal agents is known as nonpolyne antibiotics. The most common nonpolyne antibiotics we use is griseovalvin. This griseovalvin is an orofungistatic agent that is commonly used in the long term treatment of demarified infections which are caused by Epidermophyton, Microsporum, Trichophyton species. Griseovalvin is produced by Penicillinum griseovalvin, and this drug works by inhibiting fungal growth through the binding of the microtubules which are responsible for mitotic spindle formation in the fungal cells. Griseovalvin also binds to keratin precursor cells and neurosynthesize keratin in the stratum corneum of the skin, hair, nails, and therefore stopping the progression of demarified infection. In the treatment of the ringworms of the beard, scalp, and other skin infection, we use a 4-6 to six weeks dose of griseovalvin.